Hey good people, what's up? This is Coach Cookie, your life and relationship coach. Hope everyone is doing well today. I pray that everyone is blessed. If this is your first time listening, thank you so much for joining me today. If you like what you hear, please give the podcast a like, comment, and don't forget to share with your family and friends. To all my regular listeners out there, welcome back. And I want you to know that you're greatly appreciated. Here at Rising Higher, I'm going to give you some snippets for success to not only help you to survive, but to help you thrive. Now, in today's episode, we're going to discuss why the narcissist hoovers you. But before we do that, let's talk about the high points from last week's episode called Why Is It So Difficult to Leave an Abuser? Now, for those people with loved ones who don't understand and you ask yourself why they love someone abusive, And why do they make excuses for the abusers and stay with them for so long? This is really difficult to answer if you have never been through an abusive relationship yourself. Basically, the root of the problem stems from the way the victim was treated in their childhood by an abusive adult such as the narcissist. So as adults, the abusive behavior feels familiar and that's all the victim knows that's all they understand i will give all the juicy details and yes i spill the tea and i tell you the madness behind why it's so difficult to leave an abusive partner you don't want to miss this one check out the entire episode again it's called why is it so difficult to leave an abuser let's talk about what needs to happen in order for you to reach your goals and live your dreams That's what we're going to be talking about today on Cookie's Commentary. And basically, it's simple. When it's time to move on in life, then move on. This is basically how we encourage ourselves to reach our highest potential and be successful in life. In other words, when you have outgrown something in your life, it's simply time to move on and do something different. When you are operating below your potential, that means that you have gotten too comfortable. That's not a good space to be in because when this happens, you stop challenging yourself. So in essence, you stop growing. Never put yourself in a position where you simply stop learning and growing. Don't spend time feeling sorry or blaming yourself and talking about what happened to you. Whatever you talk about, that's what you multiply and expand in your life. Don't talk about negative things unless you want to keep those negative things in your life. Remember, while you're going through this, there are going to be some people out there who are going to cause problems to stop you from living your dream. Let me share something with you. Not only is it possible for you to have your dream, but it's necessary that you have it and work on that. Work on it and develop yourself so you can go for whatever you want and let that be yours. But while you're doing that, make sure to seek people who think like you and that they can see your vision. People who can't see the vision for themselves can't see it for you or anyone else. Let those people go. Get away from those kind of people because they're not going to do anything but just keep you from moving forward and living your best life and seeking your dreams. Stop talking about how miserable you are in your life and do something about it. You have to remember that you have to stay focused so you can get ahead to achieve what you want. No matter how bad it is or how bad it's, it's going to get, you can make it. You got this. You know why? Because we all are born in this world with a purpose and all of us has all of us have something that we're supposed to be doing. The good qualities we have in us gives us the responsibility to manifest our greatness and work that. Remember, this race is not over until you say it's over. Point blank, period. And it's when you realize that, it's at that point when you really get out there and do it. And that's when you truly win. Don't worry about it. Get out there. You got this. Do it. Keep your head up. So now I'm off my soapbox. Now we're on my favorite part of the show keeping it real and this is when I go through my comments or I go to my email and I look for the questions or topics that you want me to discuss and so today on keeping it real it says hey coach this is Janice and I must say that I love your show I was once in a narcissistic abusive relationship currently I'm looking to make a new circle of friends I don't want to be hurt again like I was in the past when I went through the cycle of abuse that I went through before So I wanted to know, how will I know who I can trust as I focus on developing my new circle of friends? 
Okay, Janice, here it goes. While you were in that relationship with that narcissist or any other toxic abusive relationship, you developed a lack of self-worth and it reflected in your friendships. So I want you to be careful because before you go out looking for friends, you should have spent time with yourself. In other words, the most important friendship you're going to have is the one with yourself. Okay, let me break it down to you like this. So you can understand if you have gone through your healing journey, you are not going to have to force yourself to find friends. Okay, so unless you have spent time with yourself and started your healing journey, you're not ready for that new circle of friends because all you're going to do is attract the same type of people that you did before. So again, it's very important to have a friendship with yourself and learn to love and accept yourself just as you are. When you take time to do, do this, you will build up your self-esteem and you will find it easy to set up your boundaries and talk to people so they will respect you and, and respect your boundaries. And this is going to help you keep those toxic people out of your life. So as you're going through your healing journey, remember that the relationship with yourself is going to set up the tone for what type of people you're going to attract. So when you are working on yourself, or if you are working on yourself, you, you should have been in a space where you experience things that give you excitement, that give you energy, and hopefully you were able to find your purpose. It's going to be so important to learn your real purpose in life because it's going to help you fill the void in your life so you won't be walking around thinking that I need to have someone in my life to fill in this void. Remember, you don't really need anyone in your life. You don't really need friends. They're just an added bonus so you can have someone to talk to or have a good time with every now and then. When your thinking is on this level, you will come across as confident, compassionate, considerate, understanding, and you will respect yourself. Once you cultivate these things in your life, when you least expect it, you will start attracting those kind of people. And believe it or not, you're not going to have to go looking for them. They're going to come uh, flocking to you. So keep that in mind. And when you come across these people, you're going to be able to have a real genuine con conversation with them. They're going to be concerned about your well-being. They're going to be concerned about you. It's not going to be all about them. You, If you are really working on yourself and you become a warrior, you're going to be able to attract and you're going to be able to know who is real, who's authentic, and you're going to be able to see those other warriors out there. You're going to be able to identify them. Thank you so much, Janice. This was such an awesome question. You guys keep up the questions. Keep them coming. I love to answer these questions. If you have a question that you'd like for me to answer, go to my email, heycoachcookie at gmail.com, and I would be so happy to answer any of your questions that you may have. Just remember that when I answer your questions, I'm going to bring it raw and I'm going to keep it real. Now, today on the main topic, we are talking about hoovering. Now, if you are involved with a narcissist, chances are you have experienced a range of unpleasant emotions. Most of my clients who have been on the receiving end of narcissistic abuse have made attempts to distance themselves from their abuser, but time and time again, they're drawn back into the narcissist environment. Narcissists need people who reflect back to them how incredible, victimized, or misunderstood they are. They want to control people in, and inflict hurt and pain. Narcissists thrive on drama and having people to victimize. No matter how long the narcissist in your life might make you feel, the object of the game is that it's being done to fulfill their needs in some way. Being highly skilled in manipulation, they will do all that they can to reel you back in, including hoovering. Narcissistic hoovering refers to attempts made by the narcissist to bring you back into their life, often after a period of distance. Now, the narcissist might hold off for a short while to see if you're really serious about create, creating that distance. But if it turns out that you're not that serious, they will return to hoover. When it comes to hoovering, narcissists will take full advantage of your emotions. They will tell you how much they love and miss you, what a wonderful relationship they had with you that they can't live without you. They may play the victim who needs you to jump in and rescue them for some type of reason. In short, they will emotionally manipulate you at the deepest level. You may 
will have been involved in an unequal relationship with a narcissist in the past and feel yourself being drawn back to a role that is familiar to you. Have you ever experienced getting to a big disagreement or argument with a narcissist family member and then you cut the communication with them and haven't heard from them in forever? Then all of a sudden the narcissist family members that use sneaky hoovering tactics to try to get you back in once you haven't heard from them in for forever. Let me give you a few examples of hoovering at its best when it comes to family members that you haven't talked to in a long time. So one day you get a phone call at three o'clock in the morning stating that your favorite cousin died or whoever it may be. Now you know at that point that you're going to fall for it and you start feeling sorry for the narcissist not really realizing what is going on and you continue to talk about significant things that happened over the years uh, they're going to be tragic, so it's going to be their mother being sick in the hospital. Of course, they're going to bring up again the cousin that passed away. Then you get caught up talking about how much their mother and the loss of your cousin means to you. Now, in reality, this phone call was made only for manipulative purposes. In other words, it was a great opportunity for the narcissist to take full advantage of a potentially emotional situation to suck you back into the family drama. Yes, this is their attempt to, to suck you right back into this toxic family drama. They will do everything to try to make you feel bad. Another really good example is when a family member tried to manipulate you by telling you that you have upset your mother or your father so much from separating from them that the only way to sort out the situation is for you to come back to the family. I know this sounds familiar to a lot of people. You know what I'm talking about. Let's say that you had fallen out with your father because of his abusive behavior towards your mother. So now the dad wants to blame you, the victim for the entire family falling apart. And the only suggested solution is to reestablish contact with your narcissistic dad. In essence, the victim had made it clear that he didn't want any further contact with the family. And yet the narcissist made him feel like he had to go back to them to sort out this mess. Like... This is all hoovering at its best. They will gaslight you because uh, you will find yourself on the receiving end of gifts, compliments, and declarations of undying love. You might equally be hoovered in with gaslighting behavior. The narcissist may contact you with the intention of destroying your self-esteem and making you question your version of events. They will blankly lie, distort the facts, and convince you that you are a horrible person whose perspective is just not right. It's just skewed a little bit. They convince you that they have changed. Let's say that you get a, a long text from your ex-narcissist girlfriend saying she had worked on herself and that she changed. She begged the victim to return and promised things would be different. When the victim returned to the ex-girlfriend, nothing had changed. Within a couple of weeks of the victim returning to the narcissist, started acting the same way that they did before and it was in the same abusive environment. They started doing the same abusive things that they did before they broke up. Remember, narcissists are professional liars and will do anything they have to in order for them to get what they want. The entire point of hoovering is to get you back. Remember that the narcissist knows what your weak points are and whether bullying you, begging you, or playing the victim is the most effective effective means of sucking you back in, that's what they're going to do. You may find yourself in a hoovering situation more than once. And for some people, even once is enough to pull you in into a place of danger. For instance, uh, domestic violence may be involved. Be strong and be aware when the narcissist is trying to suck you back in that toxic relationship. Stick to your ground. Stick to your boundaries. Continue to set up your boundaries and tell them, no, that's not working for me. And stay on the path to your healing. Now, for some of my listeners out there, I know this is easier said than done. Been there, done that. So if you need help in separating yourself permanently from a narcissist, we may need to talk. Go to my calendar on my website, risinghigherlife.com. Go to my schedule and set up an hour free consultation to see if you could benefit from one-on-one -on -one coaching. If no one has told you guys today, I love you all and I'm sending you a big hug. This is Coach Cookie reminding you to love yourself first as we rise higher together. Be blessed and I'll talk to you soon.